in June 20, 2013, and the U.S. government has recently purchased 30,000 guillotines. Yes, you see it right there. Now, this was lobbied for by Congress, and it passed. You have to ask yourself if all the beheadings of the Muslims that they're pulling off, well, the, the Muslims beheading people all across the place, if this isn't to try to desentinize the U.S. for future events. Because as the information comes out, it looks like 15,000 are being currently stored in Georgia and 15,000 currently stored in Montana. Now, you need to go and research Rex 84 and get caught up to speed if you have it for what is going on with the prison camps. Do you see what is going on behind your back? They've got you blinded by the mainstream media. There's also a little list of all the camps that are in each state. Listen to this, folks. I was pulled to the side road, which was uh, uh, a new cut gravel dirt road in front of a business, a builder supply business. And the right side of the road was filled with, uh, which I thought was portable toilet store. I never looked at them that close. Same in color, maybe black, but which was an odd color. And I asked him about the, the field of black boxes. What, what were they? Because they, uh, I'd never seen anything like that. And, uh, and his statement was that if he told me, I would be one of few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're, they're uh, disposable coffins, I believe he told me. And he says uh, there's a hundred, at that time, he said there was 125,000 there. And um, he um, said his brother uh, worked with the CDC in Atlanta and had been asked by the CDC to do a three-year extension to place temporary morgues all across the nation. As I went back to my home office, I spoke of it there, and of course people usually don't want to hear too much about this kind of thing. So it's never been mentioned uh, you know, publicly, except just here and there, uh, because most, like I said, the, the reaction I got, people didn't want to know about it, the, the, the few people that I spoke to. And the brother of the man that owns this field that the government is leasing this field from to store these disposable coffins, this brother has been, was given three years to set up temporary morgues around the country. Now, we found the website that we think these disposable coffins were made uh, at, and we noticed that the lids that they're advertising on the website were rounded. But the lids, hundreds of thousands of lids there, the lids we found, folks, were flat, and they were reinforced. You know what that could mean? You can stack them on top of each other. That's a lot neater to stack them in disposable coffins. Exclusive government activating FEMA camps across America, across the United States. Sent to us by people in government, I'll just leave it at that. And uh, it's got the five regions for the FEMA camps, and it talks about barricades and barbed wire and, 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 and armed guards, and uh, it, it says that they built the camps and that now they need to get ready to staff them, and that they need to be ready within a 72-hour period. And so I want to challenge everybody to call their friends and their families now and realize that the new economy is to put tens of millions of people, we already have the biggest prison population in the world, in, in, this, in this archipelago, this, 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 this giant chain of facilities all over the country.
They take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now to house 50 million Americans. They're building enough concentration camps in America by Halliburton. Now, if you go out and you find a pink dot on your mailbox, that means that they believe you'll be a good slave and you're going to go along with the program and serve our international antichrist masters. And that's the problem we have today. This conspiracy is so monstrous, so demonic, that we tell people about it and they say, you're crazy, this is America, it can't happen here. Last thing the men behind the curtain want is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking, which is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via religion, the mass media, and the educational system. They seek to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble. And they are doing a damn good job of it. This is Aaron Russo, a filmmaker and former politician. To his left is Nicholas Rockefeller of the infamous Rockefeller banking and business dynasty. After maintaining a close friendship with Nicholas Rockefeller, Aaron eventually ended the relationship, appalled by what he had learned about the Rockefellers and their ambitions. Uh, I got a call one day from um, an attorney woman I knew. And she said, would you like to meet one of the Rockefellers? I said, sure, I'd love to. And uh, we became friends, and um, he began to divulge a lot of things to me. So he said to me one night, he said that uh, there's going to be an event there. And out of that event, you're going to see, we're going to go into Afghanistan. So we run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We're going to go into Iraq to take the oil and establish a base in the Middle East. And we're going to go into Venezuela and, and try and get, and get rid of Chavez. And uh, the first two they've accomplished, Chavez they didn't accomplish. And uh, I said, you're going to see guys going into caves looking for, <laughs> looking for people uh, that they're never going to find. You know, he was laughing about the fact that you have this war on terror. There's no real enemy. He's talking about how by having this war on terror, you can never win it because this is, so it's an eternal war, and so you can always keep taking people's liberties away. And I said, how are you going to convince people that this war is real? He said, but the media. The media can convince everybody it's real. I mean, you know, it's just that you keep talking about things. You keep saying it over and over and over again, and eventually people believe it. You know, you created the Federal Reserve in 1913 through lies. You create 9-11, which is another lie. Through 9-11, you, then you're fighting a war on terror, and now all of a sudden you go into Iraq, which was another lie, and now they're going to do Iran. You know, and it's so one thing leading to another, leading to another, leading to another. Now, I would say, that, why, what are you doing this for? What, what, what's the point of this thing? You have all the money in the world you ever want. You have all the power. I said, you know, you're hurting people. It's, it's not a good thing. And he would say, what do you care about the people for? Take care of yourself and you take care of your family. And then I said to him, what's the ultimate, what, what are the ultimate goals here? He said, the ultimate, the, goal, the ultimate goal is to get everybody in this world chipped with the, with the RFID chip and uh, have all money be on those chips and everything on those chips. And if anybody wants to protest what we do or violate what we want, we just turn off that chip.